Hey everyone, and welcome to our conversation. Angela and I are here together. We want to have a chat about uh, how this year 2022 has gone and share a little bit about our experiences teaching Hebrew and Greek respectively. So welcome to our conversation. Um, we're just going to have a little informal chat here and thought you guys might enjoy listening in. So Angela, how are you doing and where in the world are you right now? <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, at the moment, I'm in Australia. Um, I'm visiting ah. family here. Very cool. So, yeah. So I'm in a makeshift studio once again. <laughs> yep, I know about those. <laughs> it's always fun. Very cool. Oh, I think my baby is uh, is crying in the background. This is a great way to start off our conversation. <laughs> is she gonna join us? <laughs> Bringing you straight into the reality of All right. Bethany's life right now. Yeah, well, cool. Uh, I'm in Mexico, uh, so we have a big time difference here, but um, great to get to chat with you. So what is going on uh, with Alpha with Angela right now? Where, what have, where have you come in 2022? What have you seen God do? Um, yeah, it's been very exciting. Um, we are now, I think, 37 videos. Um, awesome. Just published uh, Lesson 20. And mm -hmm. really looking forward to doing a lot more next year. Cool. Um, yeah, I was particularly I'd, excited with Lesson 20. It just felt like things were coming together because I'm following too as a student, for those of you who don't know, um, right. improving my Greek. And so it was really exciting to feel my Greek improving after just 20 lessons. I was like, yes! <laughs> yeah, and that's really um, useful for me because I get uh, your opinion or your perspective as a student. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, your experience of the lesson. So that helps me get some yeah. direct feedback. It's yeah, so congrats. Always... Oh, thank congrats you. Congrats on 20 <laughs> lessons. Right. It's Very not cool. always easy, uh, you know, planning. Uh, it's different to having a classroom where you get direct feedback and you see how your students yeah. are doing compared to you have a lot of students that you have never met. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> Um, we do get feedback sometimes from some of them, and I must say, mm -hmm. mostly, mostly positive and encouraging. And uh, definitely, yeah, it's exciting. Which we super appreciate, all of you who leave us nice comments. Thanks, yes. you're the greatest. Yes, we do. You <laughs> keep us going. Right. Yeah. Well, maybe that can kind of lead into talking about um, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses that you're finding with teaching via YouTube, because it's a little bit of a a new medium, I would say, um, for language teaching in this way that we're kind of trying to figure out as we go. So what have you thought about as sort of being some of the drawbacks and then some of the advantages? Um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is there was so much more that I needed to learn <laughs> mm. about technology and right. uh, so forth. Um, other than just Greek. So sure. I think that there's just so much distraction of learning. You know, I've had to learn filming and camera, you know, lighting and sound and editing, totally. video editing and about social media, um, YouTube and so on. And a lot of things go wrong. <laughs> and so, yes. so that's kind of a disadvantage because I am on my own doing this on my own. So I'm right. the cameraman and I'm the mm -hmm. person in front of the camera. So it can be a bit tricky. Um, mm -hmm. So this last year has been a learning curve. So I'm hoping that next year will go easier, and it'll, you know, as I get better yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, um, I bet it will. Right, and also, as I have already mentioned, uh, you know, you, you don't have that direct um, interaction with, with your students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And using this living method, uh, you want to use all your your skills, your language skills, and one thing we can't really encourage our students to do is to speak as well. We have to just uh, trust that they're yeah. going to practice <laughs> exactly. what they learned. <laughs> trust that they're motivated enough to do it on their own, but we can't force them. Right. Um, I don't know, do, have, you, have you learned any other, what other things about YouTube do you think are a disadvantage? Yeah, I think, I think that's the main thing that sticks out to me is just the fact that uh, I do believe that that interactive um, part or aspect to language learning is really helpful and important. Mm. Maybe not strictly necessary for learning how to comprehend the language, but really helpful for mm. really feeling like you have a handle on it. And that's something like you said, we can't really 
um, be assured that our students are doing because they're on the other end of the line and they're just watching us. So, um, so I, I try to encourage them through creating quiz, quiz videos and stuff like that to be interacting and be trying to use the language. But yeah, it's definitely not the same as being in a classroom with somebody and asking them a direct question and then sitting there waiting for them to give you an answer, right? Um, and we're trying to, in our most recent series of videos in the classroom, we're trying to kind of bring that in a little bit to at least model for people how they could do that if they're not familiar mm -hmm. with that dynamic. Um, so hopefully that's a, like another step towards developing that aspect of language learning is to give them a bit more of an example of what it would look like in a classroom so that they can yeah. maybe do that on their own um, in a class or a small group or study group or something like that. But yeah, yeah I feel like the lack of that interaction uh, on the part of the student being able to interact and speak is probably the weakest link. Um, but there's so many advantages at the same time that I I totally believe in what we're doing. You know, I think it's Absolutely. totally worth it. I think that having these videos that are engaging and immersive and are repeatable so people can watch them as many times as they want, they can go back and review them any time. You know, there are so many mm -hmm. advantages to that as opposed to a classroom that's stuck in time <laughs> um, where you can't go back to lesson two, you know, and, right. and review something because the class has moved ahead, for example. So there's so many advantages at the same time that are outweighing those disadvantages. Right, and you can reach so many more people. In fact, it's yeah. kind of limitless, um, which is a, Absolutely. probably one of the greatest advantages of this, that it's uh, accessible to to anyone in, anywhere in the world mm -hmm. who has access to the internet or even who doesn't because um, they can download them. Right. And right. it's free. Doesn't it matter the time zone they're in right. or the age or anything. Right. And, and you can watch it where, whenever you want. So I've got one, yeah. uh, one of my students who says that uh, over breakfast, her and her children watch Alpha with Angelo, which is great. Nice. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Definitely for me, one of the most encouraging things is to hear from uh, people who are doing it with their kids and yeah. their families and who are really excited to uh, finally have a, a way to teach their kids the biblical languages. So that always makes me super happy when I get we get those those testimonies. Makes our day every time. Yeah. I'll just tell them that last time we actually did this uh, chat a couple of months ago. And <laughs> oh, the confession comes. <laughs> the confession. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was so it was so discouraging that it's taken me another couple of months to find the time and also the courage <laughs> to do this again. Um, but every technical problem that could happen happened. Oh boy, there is so much to think of that um, yeah. probably people don't realize how much. Technical yeah, it really things go, would be a luxury to just be able to focus on the language, right? That would be so nice to not have to think about yeah. technical aspects. But yeah, not in this case. We have to think about all that. So, but you've been doing an awesome job with the learning curve. I know it's a big learning curve uh, to figure all this out when you don't have experience with it. And yeah. I tell Andrew all the time, because he's my cameraman, like, I could not do this without you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so hats yeah. off to you for doing it on your own, because that's a big deal. That's yeah, a big deal. It's, been, it's been fun on, on one hand, because I, you know, I love, actually do love the technology. It's mm -hmm. just... Uh, yeah, it's difficult to do it all at once, and especially yeah. when you don't know what you're doing. But I'm um, I'm learning. Yeah, for sure. Um, and also, in in I've had other challenges. Like uh, South Africa has been going where I live. I I live in South Africa. I'm South African, and uh, we've had a lot of challenges in our country lately. And one of them mm -hmm. is we don't have enough electricity. <laughs> and so right. we've had we now seem to permanently have. Um, I think they're called rolling blackouts in America, or we call it load shedding, where you mm -hmm. only have, um, you share the electricity. So there's a couple hours a day where you don't have any. And there's been times where I haven't had electricity for like seven, eight hours a day. Um, oh, man. In two, two and a half um, hour gaps. So that's been a challenge and my Wi-Fi Definitely. challenges and <laughs> all kinds of things. But now we've got everything working on battery. So... <laughs> Hopefully we'll right. me that. Learn all the sneaky workarounds to try. Right. And another thing that happened this year, which was a really, really big event in my life, was that God provided me with a home, my first, awesome. my first home ever. I've been a nomad for many, mm -hmm. many, many years. 
and uh, yeah, I set up the studio in my in my sitting room, and uh, okay. yeah, that was quite a challenge having to put everything up and down all the time. And now I have a room dedicated to to Alpha with Angela. Yeah, so oh, that's, that's really great. exciting. That saves so much time right. to not have to set everything up again every time you yeah. film. That's great. And you've had some changes in your life this last year too. <laughs> we have, yeah. <laughs> it's just a few. <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, I do not have the time I used to have <laughs> because I have a baby now. And, I um, oh mean, she's such a blessing and she brings us so much joy every day. But I'm definitely feeling the difference in um, not being able to get things. Especially now that she's crawling. Yes. I think for the first six, seven months, I could kind of like keep her on my lap and she didn't do very much and I could even nice. like nurse her and edit videos at the same time but <laughs> not anymore now she's all over the place all over the house and the little so, hands are probably very active <laughs> yeah trying to knock over the computer tower and pull on the headphones and you know <laughs> so definitely that's been a challenge and I've had to just come to terms with the fact that I, I can't put in as many hours as before which is Hard for me because I absolutely love working on videos and editing them and uh, planning these Hebrew yeah. lessons. Like it's just such a joy for me. But um, and I, I always worked in the in the evenings a lot. But now basically the evenings when she's asleep are my only concentrated times of work. Um, wow. So yeah, during the day it's just really hard to to get a lot done. Even switching off and on with Andrew taking care of her, he does a lot to help me out. Um, but even so, none of us, <laughs> neither of us feel like we can get a ton done <laughs> with her so. uh, on the prowl all day. So definitely that's been an adjustment. But we're still seeing like how God is blessing our time and we're still able to get a lot of things out there. So thankful for that. Yeah, um, you guys it's also. just a little bit of a slowdown, but not a stop. So we keep pressing on and hopefully different stages of her development will give us more time and we'll just push through and and see how things change as they go along and keep plugging away slow and steady well she sure is cute and she makes a great prop <laughs> that is true she makes a fantastic prop <laughs> so we figure people will forgive us for you know being a little bit slower with the videos because there's such a cute baby in them to make yeah, them smile, for sure. so <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, what is yeah. uh, what are your what are your goals for Alpha with Angela going forward? Here, I'm not going to ask you to give like a goal of videos per per for this coming year or anything because I know that that doesn't work for us yeah. either. Like, <laughs> no point in setting a number goal because we just don't know what's going to happen. But, but just. Maybe share a little bit with us about what your vision is uh, as a whole for the course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, that the goal in that aspect is just to get as many videos out as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it has, uh, you know, started off with no volunteers and slowly, slowly uh, getting more and more help. That's great. Which is great. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's more of a general goal of just continuing to work and get out as many videos as possible. And we want to keep them good quality. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we, our goal is for our students to be able to read a, a reader's edition of a Bible without having to constantly look up words, words in a dictionary. So that's right. the, the end goal. And right. uh, yeah, so... Some of the things that I've learned that we need to keep in, in focus, um, that our goal is really to reach mother tongue Bible translators. Mm -hmm. And so some of the decisions uh, around what we're doing will, will really be determined by that. Yeah, um, But yeah, so, but of course we have a larger audience than that. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to, to just try and keep them fun and uh, engaging and uh, to try and cover the basics of, of a Greek grammar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like what you would get in a first year grammar, basically? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, it sounds about like, like my goals too for the Hebrew course. Right. Get so people, I think what, keep, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, finish your sentence then. Well, just uh, the goal would be to, to keep Hebrew fun the whole way. And uh, get people to the point where they've basically gotten a year of basic Hebrew grammar and um, 
like you said, that they can read the text without too much difficulty. Like it's always going to be a little bit difficult, but yeah. uh, they don't have to look up like every other word. They can feel like they're actually reading fluently um, and not frustrated by it, not intimidated by it. Nice. And that they feel like they have the basis to um, jump off of that and go into deeper studies if they want to and like really own the basics because uh, they've heard it so many times and it's really internalized. So that would be my goal. I think one of my other goals is to try and produce as many stories as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have some simplified biblical stories and also yeah. others uh, to, to have opportunity for uh, reading proficiency, uh, to improve reading proficiency. Of course, students need to be able to, mm -hmm. uh, need to be reading uh, the Bible in the original language anyway, even if they don't understand what they're reading, just to, to practice on their own. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a big part of uh, being able to progress. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I know that myself, being a bit of a perfectionist, uh, <laughs> it was very hard for me to read and not, and not understand what I'm reading and have to know mm. every single word. Um, but yeah, that can definitely just be a get used up. to reading. Mm -hmm. For people, when, when you have to understand every single thing and you can't get into the flow of the text... I think that can become a, a bit of an obstacle uh, for people. Yeah. Not to say that you shouldn't try to understand everything, but it depends on what your goals are. If your goal is um, like exegesis, and then yeah, look at every right. detail. But if your goal is just like I'm language learning, I need to, um, I'm, I'm exposing myself to the text a lot, you know, then getting into the flow of reading without getting hung up at every point is uh, probably more helpful for that goal. Right, yeah, I'm talking specifically about just practicing reading reading in Greek or Hebrew, especially right. if you're not used to the, the alphabet. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you, because you know Hebrew as well, uh, what do you see as some of the differences between teaching Greek and teaching Hebrew? Wow. Um, yeah, when I started this, uh, since you've had a lot of headway, um, I thought that, well, we thought I could just uh, follow your videos and, you know, make them Greek. But mm. it doesn't work like that <laughs> because <laughs> there are a lot of different differences between <laughs> Hebrew and Greek. Right. Um, personally, I think Greek is harder, mm. but it could be that I just because I'm fluent in modern Hebrew, perhaps that's mm -hmm. why I find Hebrew uh, easier. But uh, well, just from... I also agree with you that Greek is harder, but <laughs> that's just <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. the, well, so that's two. Right. I think a, a small example is that uh, Hebrew has masculine and feminine, and that could be quite difficult to get used to if, uh, if from someone whose mother tongue is like English, where we don't have um, mm -hmm. grammatical gender. But mm -hmm. then Greek has three. <laughs> And so um, there's just more statistically more forms of the words that you you, know, you need right. to learn or you need to know. And right, then, but you need to at least be able to recognize when you see it. Right. Yeah. And then um, Greek also has five cases, and mm -hmm. so then there's more opportunity to have different inflections of the word, or that just means different forms of the same word. Right. For example, in English, we have the definite, definite article, the, and the is the. Whereas in Greek, I think there's 24 different forms of the. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the, one of the simplest words. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to take a bit longer to lay the foundation than it would for Hebrew, yeah. who has a, a nice little three three-letter root system that you kind of plug into all the, the binyanim, the different, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like different formulas. How would you explain that to someone? Well, I think stems is what they often say in grammar books, the different stems, but yeah. Right. But then they'll also call um, Greek a, I've forgotten what the terminology is, but that Greek doesn't really have a root, it has a stem. And right. You, uh, you don't... Hebrew grammar uses stem a bit differently than the rest yeah. of linguistics, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, okay. I see. Not, it's the same word, but uh, used a bit differently, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so in, in, in Greek, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to recognize the root. And so mm. when you have different aspects and tenses of the same word, 
they can sometimes mm -hmm. change quite drastically and it's uh, yeah, yeah it's not as easy for for a, a beginner to recognize the word yeah yeah so yeah so, so maybe you're, so that, you're feeling like it's getting a little bit slower to get going with the lessons because yeah. there's just so many different forms to cover right and and also want to approach it in a wise way of how to not overwhelm the student mm -hmm. um because yeah when it, we really my goal is to keep it simple so it might be frustrating for some people that how slow i'm going and uh, but i'm really taking it slow so that i don't mm -hmm. lose anybody along the way and yeah. um, well even i as a language geek appreciate how slow you're going so thank you <laughs> <laughs> i just yeah, want to affirm I, your slow pace because it's thank good. you <laughs> thank you um, yeah, and you know, in, this, in the future, when they're all done, it won't feel slow because those lessons will be yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, it still may feel slow to some people, but I think to, to the, the average person who hasn't learned anything about Greek, it won't feel slow because right. Greek is, learning a new language is difficult. And then, mm -hmm. you know, learning Greek is an ancient Greek which, that people don't usually speak is, is a really big challenge. Yeah, um, and I think laying really solid foundations with the very basics, right. uh, really internalizing how this language works at the very basic level is really good investment for going far in the language. Right. Even if you don't feel like you're getting to the advanced stuff very fast, really owning those basic stuff, those basic uh, grammar points is, I think, a really good investment. Mm -hmm. And I'm still experimenting a little bit on which directions to go in because I'm hoping to be able to get through some of the difficult stuff um, without the student even realizing, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, sometimes yeah. if you learn it from a grammar book, it's like, whoa. Um, but right. when you're just hearing a language as a child, I mean, a child doesn't go, wow, that's difficult grammar. <laughs> they just right. learn to speak. So, right. Yeah, I love that. Sometimes I've had people comment on things and they're like, wait, I didn't realize you stuck all that stuff in there. Like, for example, the yiktol verb forms, I, I had a bunch of them in past lessons, but I never drew attention to the fact they were just kind yes. of easy to understand based on the context. And then when oh, I yes. revealed that they were all there later, when I actually taught that verb form, um, one of our volunteers was like, oh my goodness, I didn't even notice those were there. And I just understood them. And I was like, yep, that's what I was going for. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And that's a, another, you know, an import, a, a great example of why people who are going through these videos, not to get too stuck on um, mm -hmm. understanding every single a word yeah. or whatever just as long as you understand the what you're talking about and the concept exactly. and getting used to listening to to the greek and also practice speaking it just mm -hmm. helps you internalize it and then it's there in your brain somewhere yeah <laughs> trust your brain <laughs> your brain will do its job trust your brain <laughs> yeah Absolutely. and then yeah and we do so much repetition that eventually when when we actually explain it um you'll go oh yeah i remember that mm -hmm. so Hey everyone, so Ansel and I finished up this conversation in part two over on her channel. So uh, if you're interested, go take a look right here. And uh, we're gonna be talking about lesson planning, vision for the future, workflow, and whether or not the two of us are cut out to be YouTubers. So don't miss it, go check it out. And if you're at all interested in learning Greek, give her a subscribe and help us spread the word. Shalom.